What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. We ain't done our hit in a while. We got a guest today. We got a guest today. Ow, we got ow. a guest today. And let me just say this. Before we even started, you been cutting up already. <laughs> you are. We you just had an interesting conversation. An yeah. interesting conversation. So, mm. obviously, we don't have to really get no intro. Y'all already know. Oh, it's fucking Young Draw in the building. Period. Period. And, my and he got that shit on. I was just about to say that. This, you I got, got my, that this shit my, on. This is my Valentine's Day outfit. I like that. I like that you in the spirit. You do, know? You have, do you have plans for V-Day? Um, no. I usually work on, like, holidays and stuff okay. like that. Maybe you should drop a love song for the girl. You dig what I'm saying? I'm tired of rappers rapping about sweating the block, yeah. shooting the off. I want to hear about somebody being in love. Right. Why? Well, I thought she was about to say I want to hear them about shooting up the club. I don't want to hear that. But a different type of club. We no, I know. That's what I thought yeah. you were that's a, that's a song. You woo, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try. I might do it. I don't know. Yeah, it's just. Cool. I think you should drop a little Valentine's Day exclusive. You know what I'm saying? I, I might got some up my I sleep. can sing the hook for you. Haru. Not Haru. Hey, yeah. I ain't got no Haru. <laughs> One thing about it, Lex going to shoot her shot with every artist that we have on the show. She's trying to get in the studio. She's trying to get in the studio. You going to let her on your song? Yeah. Period. Pooh. Yes. yes. We going to hold you to it. Man, come on with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm open. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to make sure that he... Everybody else told you yeah, too. I'm trying to make sure you got a definite yes. I, I. <laughs> I, I. Okay. Okay, so what's up, Joe? What you been up to? What's new? What's the tea? I've been, I've, I've been chilling, like, um, right now, at, at this very moment, I am um, standing up against gun violence um, in Atlanta. I'm starting in my home, though, at where I'm from. Um, I have a tour going on called It Still Takes a Village. Um, it's an extension of It Takes a Village. I heard my mom and them saying it, and I heard, like, older people saying it when I was young. And, you know, I kind of felt like that was that was what I was a part of also right. because, you know, I used to be, like, bad a little bit when I was young, and I'm, I remember saying, like, bad words, and then, like, my my neighbor would grab me and take me to my mama, you know. He just said some, you feel me, and then mm -hmm. I get in trouble. So I feel like it still takes a village, and I want to be a part of, I want to use my platform to actually save a couple of lives, you know. Right. It's tour season right now, but I'm on a tour to save lives. So I'm like going that. to Chicago, Atlanta, West Coast, Memphis, stuff like that. But I started in the home. It was very successful in Atlanta, though. I already That's know. That's what's up. So, like, what exactly, like, made you want to start it? Uh, I, I'm a victim of gun violence. So, you know, my mom been shot before. Mm -hmm. My brother been shot before. You know what I mean? And, you know, and when it did me in a bad way. I had mm -hmm. to wear shit bag and stuff like that. We can curse. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, I mean, like. How I'm, long did you have that? Like a year and a half. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, it was it was very tough at that age to actually cipher through that. Yeah. So, I felt like, you know, I, I've spoken on it a lot in my, in, my, in my raps or whatever. But to actually take a stand on it, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like some of these kids are like my pond of children, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? My nephew, Jelani, he was a water boy. He got killed. They were arguing over $10, you know, $10, God and damn. he ended up getting shot. Them water boys be bad. Yeah, he ended up dying with half of the $10 in his hand. So mm. it's it's kind of like, yeah. I, if, if nobody ain't going to say nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? I have to. You have to bring awareness. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, do I'm, you feel like the music and what people are rapping about, though, is really affecting, like, the community? Like, do you feel like these young kids feel like they got to do all that stuff? Because of the music, I think, I think to blame hip hop is like an easy way out. Right, you know, it's kind of like an insult. Um, it's a, a long, it's kind of like alarming too because I, I believe that it starts in home. Like what you let your kids listen to, mm. what you're teaching your kids. Are you letting them believe that this stuff is real, or are you letting them in, in letting it influence them to actually do wrong? Right. Like, what are you letting your kids do? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like. Hip hop has a positive influence and a negative. Mm -hmm. I think that people should know the truth about what they're listening to. Right. Some of it is, you know, fiction, you know, but some of it is real. Right. You know? But right. I also feel like I, I agree with you. It is kind of like a cop out because it's like parents or children. Right. Why are you letting, you know, 
media parent your children and affect them. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And I'm sure that you can agree, like, being from certain environments, it's important the type of people that you have around you that right. influence you as mm-hmm. well. So we definitely wanted to ask you about, like, what was it like meeting T.I. As a, as a teenager? Because I'm sure that that probably has some type of influence on I mean, what you're doing right now, too. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we both was... I don't, know, I don't think... I had a hobby of yeah. rapping, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, but I mostly wanted to. Um, I thought that um, hustling was a thing for me back then, like, mm-hmm. and because and he just as well as he did because mm-hmm. shit, he was selling dope. And we was just just trying the street out, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was presented to us as when we were young because I wanted to be like my partner who sold dope, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't have no superhero. My superhero was a drug dealer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So at that age, when we when we met, it was almost like I, when I moved to that area, I was like, I seen somebody that was like just like me, and they were talking like me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because we considered the people from that area like a little bit slower than we were. I'm like, we a little rougher than that, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you know, West Side kind of like really rough. You know what I'm saying? And then like, so when I seen him, I was like, man, you know, I gravitated toward him, and just so happened we was in the music too. Mm-hmm. So shit, it was really nice. Now. You still drawing, you still cleaning this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cause you put that shit like I keep saying. Cause look, I like to call myself the Louis Vuitton Dawn. Okay, cool. Cause I like a little Louis. One thing about me, I'm gonna go buy me a little Louis. You did so what talk I'm about like the summer when like Shoulder Lean came out and how it changed your life. Like when you was in the studio, was you like, yeah, nigga, like uh, this is about to be that shit. You know what, y'all? I was in High Tower Reed. I was in the nine before everybody. You know what I'm saying? Was over there. I, I was at all. Uh, Cookie spot, man. I remember um, uh, my my partner Fat used to come get me from over there all the time. I I, I know he used These to. These is to... all names that I feel like everybody in every hood knows. Yes, <laughs> yes. Cookie and Fat. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Like like well, he used to he used to drop me off and come get me off from over there all the time. But that was one of the places that I felt like I was. Um, creative because mm-hmm. you know and plus I was on drugs in that area and that shit used to like stimulate my mind mm. and you know I wrote shoulder lean over there you know what I'm saying and when I wrote it I was sitting on the end of a bed and I felt like I had just I think I want to say just dived into my rhymes like like a dream so when I picture myself writing draw I picture myself in this outfit. I was like, when I say this, I'm going to make everybody spread out so they can look at my outfit. You feel (laughs) what I'm saying? And I I planned it all out. I I like, this is how this shit finna go. You feel (laughs) what I'm saying? Like, y'all going to have to step back. You're going to look at my outfit. They're going to be like, oh. And they're going to be like, everybody know me here because they smoking me. And, you know, it it was just, it was almost like... I was in a dream, and then I was like, yeah, they're going to have to do this. You know what I'm saying? That's so, very poetic. Yeah, writing it was big for me. So when I when I got through um, writing it and I got to the studio, but because I already had the verse. Mm-hmm. So when I got to the studio, Tip was like, man, we need to do something. You know, we can't really dance like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I know I can't dance. You know what I'm saying? But so we just yeah, we can do some stuff that, dance, you know what I'm saying? Period. We can do something that we don't. You know what I'm saying? We don't look too crazy in the club. You know what I'm saying? Because if you can dance, I'm all for that. My brothers can dance, and I was very jealous coming mm-hmm. up. I'm like, right, man, they didn't even know how to do everything. You feel me? That's but me. I can't bust in no mood. You dig? So I had to figure <laughs> out what I could do to make myself look good and cool at the same time. And me and Tip actually just came up with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When he said the, 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 uh, the tone, I was like, okay, put it on the beat. And when he put it on the beat, you know what I'm saying? About. I mean, hits, because yes. niggas still be shoulder leaning. Yes. I don't shoulder lean right now. Oh, <laughs> off these drinks off top, <laughs> feeling too good. Oh. So, wait, let's let Ty let us know what we yes. drinking today, because uh, these are some good drinks, okay? So, we have a mix. We have some cocktails, and then we have a mocktail going on. So, for the cocktail version, we call this the Blackberry Excellence. This is going to have some blackberry liqueur. We have our Tito's for Lex, and we have our uh, Casamigos for Drea. Um, It has some blackberry syrup in there, some lemon juice, and I muddled some fresh raspberries and blackberries. And then for Mr. Dro, we have a mocktail. We have some passion fruit juice. We have some of that blackberry syrup, some lemon juice, and then a little bit of Sprite. And of course, I muddled some of that fresh fruit just to give you some of that refreshing taste. Mm, You dig what I'm saying? I like that. (laughs) So talk about why you don't drink, because we like to get lit. Yeah, I am 
18 months sober. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so this yeah. is like kind of a pretty recent journey a little bit. Yeah, say? it's recent, but like to be coming from where I came from in this much time, it seems like an eon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, I, I do celebrate my sobriety in, in, a, in a fashionable way. Like, you know what I'm saying? I like to dress up and, you know, act out my cleanness. You oh, we see. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspired your transition? Um, actually, man, to be honest with you, um, you was cutting up. I mean, well, I have it's <laughs> it's a lot to to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Because um I've been on a journey, you know, trying to figure out who who I really am for a long time. Because I think people be on drugs just to mask shit mm -hmm. and, and just hiding and running from what the, what the truth is. I was not able to sit with my real self for a long time. So actually doing that now, I can tell you that I, I, I did it because I really wanted to find out who I really am, you know? And are you enjoying the journey? Just like a motherfucker. I know that's you right. You know what I'm saying? So, because you were just talking about a place that's like, what's it called, the sober place where they, they have the- Oh, the, the, the restaurant. The restaurant that's yeah, like- the, Sober, oh, social. sober, social. Yeah, Zaytoven turned me on to it. So, do people be in there like lit? Like they take shots of the non-alcoholic like liquor? Like they taking shots of water? She said they have non-alcoholic beer, non-alcoholic yeah. wine. And she said non-alcoholic spirits too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it just push you into. It's just it's something for me because you know you, you know the alcoholics got their places. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go somewhere and kick it and have my drinks mixed up like the beautiful young lady mixed it up and. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it, and hey, man, she takes pride in it, and I'm gonna take pride in my sobriety. And you know, I love I mean? that. You do what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Now you won't catch Lex P there, <laughs> but everybody who's there, I am super. I I, I love it. I might go visit it. I might try it out. Y'all might be trying to have my little sober, <laughs> sober night. So being that you're from Atlanta, I feel like you know that's probably something a lot of Atlanta people know about. So we transplants. Mm. We not from here. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know how do Atlanta people feel about everybody moving here to Atlanta? I I like it. You know you what like I mean? Me? Because it's almost like they come to see something. Yeah. Like, you know, they like something from here. Or And I've always felt like when out-of-towners come, they be like, say something, Dro. And I be like, what, shout And they be like, Because you did just say it. I was like, shout <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it be how we... <laughs> it be how we talk and how we kick it, you know what I'm saying? Got no shit like that. <laughs> shit like that. Oh, uh -huh. That's probably my favorite thing that little people say. Goddamn. Got down. But okay, so I feel like the, the culture in Houston is like it's just different mm -hmm. because we always say this, like the culture in Houston, like we really don't support each other a lot. Mm -hmm. People usually have to leave Houston to pop off. Yeah, that's and, why everybody moving here. Yeah, so, and people always say, oh, when you come to Atlanta, they're going to support you. If you good at what you do and you focus, like you'll you'll come up for sure. So mm -hmm. do you feel like that's true about Atlanta? Like they're good at su like supporting each other? We are. Mm -hmm. I think that for the most part, like when you, when you cool the fuck, and everybody like you, that's just what they do. Mm -hmm. And we all fuck with you if we like you. Mm -hmm. But if you do some lame shit, well, we ain't fucking with you like that. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't get that. You feel me? <laughs> I mean, because like it's so loving. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Then we from the South, like Houston, like we still South people. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We, we love you. We polite, you know what I'm saying? We, hey, yes ma'am, no ma'am. So you know we treat each other with that same type of, you know what I'm saying? We always talking, we love somebody. Yeah. Uh, I love you, bro. You know what Literally, I, mean? I never, are you Monica's cousin too? Everybody her cousin. No, I'm actually like a, a good friend. Okay, because I mean, everybody loves, I cannot wait to meet, we Monica, was, everybody we was, is cousins We used to hang out like, like me and Monica was like, Besties. Besties. Like, I yeah. love Monica. Yeah. I just feel like she if you seem very down supporter. to earth. Yeah. Great, very big supporter. Yes. Yeah. I just feel like if you in Atlanta, you not Monica cousin or her her friend, like what are you really doing? Nah, right. we ain't made it yet. We ain't made it yet, <laughs> friend. Yeah. We gotta get on the cuss status. I, I ain't I ain't seen I ain't seen really like I done seen a lot of strong women in, you know, and that came through out my life that showed me, you know, what strong women are, but mm. It's, it's to see one that's built like Shouter, mm -hmm. like, that's almost, that's rare. 
What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P, and I have a very special announcement. Well, I already announced it, but I'm gonna let y'all know again. We are going on tour. It's starting in June, y'all. Look, we announcing it extra early so y'all got time to get your tickets. No excuses. We got LA, Philly, Chicago, Atlanta, Houston. Now, Listen to me, because I know how y'all get. We are still adding dates. I repeat, we are still adding dates. But if you see your city right now, go ahead and get your tickets. If you don't see your city, don't worry. We still coming, okay? So make sure y'all go to www.poorminds.com and get y'all VIP meet and greets. We all saw it, Pooh. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know we always talk about growing and changing and evolving. Y'all witness it with us on this show. Yes, we love better help. And especially, you know, right now with it being the colder months, seasonal depression is such a real thing. And it's so important for you to talk to somebody and get some therapy. And better help makes things so easy because all you have to do is go online and you can talk to someone online you don't have to leave the comfort of your own home and then also if you don't like your therapist they make it super easy to change therapies yes all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and they'll connect you with someone asap it's super easy and like she said everything is done online so what you're going to do is go to www.betterhelp.com backslash poor minds that's better h-e-l-p dot com backslash poor minds and you're going to get 10 percent off of your first month if you've never tried therapy now's your chance freestyle two and three two one okay. now i gotta be a little messy go ahead because one time, I think this was like a breakfast in a club, uh, breakfast club interview you mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. and he like asked you if you miss Fantasia, and he was like, "Yeah, I do." Psych. That was. <laughs> so I, 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 what? What made you do that in that moment? That was. Like, I, was just, I was just being funny. Um, I, I I probably was missing her at that point. You okay, know, just, so y'all had know, a good you know how you mess, You know how you mess stuff by saying dumb shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I probably was in that mode. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, great girl. You know what I mean? All, all the time. Facts. Yeah. The truth came out. I've always, because that, I mean, I'm not going to lie, the clip was funny. It was funny. I was just being an asshole. Mm. You, dig what I'm, you dig what I'm saying? I dig a little bit. <laughs> I dig a little bit. So, you know, you are, Dro, you put that shit on. Yeah. Always. So, talk about spending $5 million on Ralph Lauren. I mean, when I said that, I'm, people, you know, I've been in the music business for 20 mm -hmm. years. You know what I'm saying? Auntie no. <laughs> so Auntie no. When you, when you speak of it, like, when I speak on it, like, and that's just, I, it just closed, period. Right. I think Ralph Lauren was a big bulk of that. Oh. Mm. You know what I mean? Especially I at that time. Yeah. I mean, sure. yeah, a big bulk of that. But I did, I did venture off into linens and gators and, you know what I'm saying, Louis Vuitton and Gucci and stuff like that. But mostly Ralph Lauren apparel, you know what I mean? But um, I, I say, like, over the years, I just dedicated most of my time to Ralph Lauren because I felt like players only live once, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was the acronym of Polo. And I felt like, hey, man, I'm a player. I ain't got number one life. You know, this is it. And it kind of, like, made me fit in, like, when I was young. Like, you couldn't tell where I was from. Like, I did have, I had, like, six goals at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like, I was like, well, this culture, six right. goals at the top. But the way I'm about to dress is kind of like a white boy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm going to be able to fit in. Like, without me smiling, you could probably, I can go golfing. Facts. I play tennis. When you had the mat, you always used to do the matching top and the bottom. Yeah. That was the first time I seen like a nigga really do that shit. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, so I see the vision. Well, first of all, I feel like you really kind of put niggas on purple label. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like niggas wasn't really wearing, like, niggas was wearing the regular polo, mm -hmm. the regular polo shirts and shit, mm -hmm. but niggas wasn't really wearing purple label. Yeah, it was, it was, now that shit was high. Yeah, you know what I'm that, saying? Shit that shit was high. Yeah, that shit for was high. For sure. But I feel like we also, like, just went through a time where black people just loved polo. Like, if you yes. bought your nigga some polo, he was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, I remember I bought that for my little high school boyfriend Ooh. for Valentine's Day. I bought, him, like, <laughs> I bought him two, I bought him two polo shirts and a little polo fleece jacket. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Had him got you had him with his young tro outfit on. Yeah, this was like 2007 <laughs> when we was yeah, yeah, I was in high school. I mean, you know what? I, I was appreciative to actually be in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because I'm not gonna speak for another state. Well, you know what I mean, or other people. I knew in my city, you know what I'm saying, 
if you had it on like that, then like, but, but you know, this my, this my young Dro swag. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, for me to be, you know, recognized in that, that light was very dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they call me Dro Polo, stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And today I still wear it because it's, it just fits me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think you have a personal style, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people don't. Yeah. People get lost in trying to, like, fit in and feel mm -hmm. like what other people have yep. on and mm -hmm. stuff. So even though you did say, like, you were kind of wearing stuff to kind of fit in, but it was still, like, n can't nobody wear that shit but Dro. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody would look right in this unless, like, yeah, pulling, he got it yeah, on. Pulling colors off and shit like mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? An icon. Yes, man. So do you repeat outfits, though? Uh, yes, um, because like because they're pieces. Okay. Like because like if I if I told you, well I I, I do ha I did have three hundred and sixty five outfits. God damn. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I wouldn't. You I'll counted be, them? I mean, well, I, I, it has to be like that. You know what I'm saying? I know I know for a fact that I I've owned three hundred and sixty five different outfits. That's insane. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's, over a, a 20, whole year not over, wearing the but, same. But outfit? But over a twenty year span though. Yeah. Well. Good point. But okay, so do you feel like like rappers have to have like a certain image? Like you gotta have the ice, you gotta have the watch, you gotta have the car. I think we be trying to mask something. To be, I don't mean to let the cat out the bag, but if you got on a lot of jewelry, that means we're not confident in who we used to be. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? I like that. We we buy into, you know, the chain, and you know what I mean, and and it makes us feel. Like we have authority, it, it, it strokes the ego. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And without these things, we think that we can't attract you or you. You feel what I'm saying? Like we we looking for that. Like, we, hold on, we, now. no, we looking. There might for, be a little truth to that one. We, we we be looking for people to who is that with that? You feel what I'm saying? The attention. We we are very we are very much so attention seekers. Rappers are. Okay. You know what I mean? I know I I I struggle with that. You know? Yeah. Do you still struggle with that? Sort of. Ooh, I think everybody <laughs> But I think that everybody struggles with that to a certain extent. I think everybody like attention more than they like to lead on, more than they like to admit. Yeah, of course. You know, I think you have people who are very outward with it, and mm -hmm. you can tell, like, okay, you like attention. Mm -hmm. But then I think everybody likes attention sometimes. And nothing is wrong with that. I think that's just like a human emotion, <laughs> a human thing. Yeah, but I agree. It, it, you have to watch it, though, because it can get yeah. sickening. It can become you know it, it can become a disease, yeah. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because people, like, too much of anything would probably hurt you, you know what I mean? Of course. Like, so when you're in that light, you have to be very grounded. You have to be done, got taught some stuff. Mm -hmm. Your parents have to teach you, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't taught how to control what, what like, attention and my ego and stuff like that and, and being flashy, you feel what I'm saying? Because I, I went and got rose gold rims on a truck and, you know, this kind of stuff, you know what I mean, 30 inches and all that, and then then stop there, your, your chain is this big, and you feel what I'm saying? I went overboard. Well, yeah, but then it's like, to me, at the same time, it's like, okay, maybe going overboard to a certain extent, but then I also feel like you only live once. True, but it kind of... Now, if you putting rose gold rims on every <laughs> car and you buying every car that's out there, every new car that come out there, maybe that's a little excessive. You know what I yeah. mean? But you putting rose gold rims on a car because this the car you always wanted and these the rims you always want. I feel like you only live once. You celebrate. And... Yeah, but celebrate your accomplishments. It's just kind of like, you know, you got to do it. Moderation. Moderation. Um, when was the moment where you was kind of like, okay, I'm wilding? Like, I'm cutting up. Like, I'm doing a lot. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I'm cutting up right now. I mean, well, I, I, it was, it's, 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 it's times. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, when, when the money came and what I was doing with the money, I knew I was doing a little bit too much then. Mm. Because I used to get the money... And I ain't want to hang out with other people that had the kind of money. I'd be in somewhere at the Ridge, you feel, mm -hmm. or somewhere on Bank. Like, you know, I'd be on Simpson. And, you want to be the big dog. I want to be like that. You know, I, I, it wasn't enough for me to have 20,000 people saying my name. Mm -hmm. I want to go where and get praised in the ghetto, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I want, I want to be the biggest, you know. So that's the attention thing. I didn't know how to control it. So at that point, I felt like 
I'm doing a little bit too much because I'm worth a couple of M's. I'm sitting in the middle of Etheridge, and you know what I'm saying? Like now, you was cutting up. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's pretty. Now you know damn well. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this: We have a term called a BDB, Mm. a big dick baller. Mm -hmm. Basically, somebody who just you know take care of his. Was you tricking? Was you a BDB? I was just. I was tricking. Okay. Yeah. Um. Because I felt like. I shouldn't be involved with the beautiful lady and don't do nothing for her. I uh, know that's what I'm saying? right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to be, and then, and I'm going to dog it out. You know what I'm saying? So, I need to give you something. Dog, what up? <laughs> now, what you mean by that? The, give like, auntie the like, lingo. Because, dog because, it out. Because, like. Dog it out. Like, I'm going to come, come at three in the morning when I get ready. I'm going to split it over. And I, you feel me? I'm going to have my positions. I don't want to talk. Oh, like, he dogging it out. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, slut it out. Then get out of there. But it's going to be. But get what, though? I'm Celine in you. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? I'm having, I'm having my way with you now. But, but you 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 making up for yeah, it. Like you making it worth her time. B- b- very much so. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Because I mean, honestly, I can on appreciate the other end, that. Because there do be niggas that be doing all that yeah, shit. Yeah, some niggas will do that and then ask you for something. Nothing. <laughs> Not me, but some, some you know. niggas will do that and ask you for something. <laughs> <laughs> shit, baby mom, what you get? Um, buy me like, a sound. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you fucking with somebody or just fucking with somebody. You don't want to see anybody that you're involved with like down bad and you doing all this for yourself. Well, somebody, somebody, especially if, especially if you haven't. If you haven't, man, it ain't supposed to be. It ain't kidding. no big deal. I mean, true, but it be niggas who be having. I be seeing it. It be niggas who be having it. Don't be giving a fuck about the bitch you say. Oh, but it's because it, it's like now. I feel like the the conversation is like, oh, you're not supposed to do nothing for these bitches, and the women be like, oh, you can't do nothing for these niggas. It's it's a little too much. Like it's not that big of a deal to make sure the woman that you fucking with straight. It's not that big of a deal to make sure the man that you fucking with, like, you can cook him breakfast or cook him dinner. It's not that serious. See, because me, I, I had a, a beautiful young lady that I used to talk to. Mm. Her breath was thing. I bought her a toothbrush, a hey, gold man. one. I did. It was had it like electric? A, yes. Ooh. Bro, you know when you talk about a crazy turn of a conversation, <laughs> I was not. Listen, bro. I was pretty, not expecting pretty, you pretty, to say that. Pretty as a motherfucker, bro. Smelled what did it like, smell like? Bro, smelled like Boom. it was two butt naked <gasps> people. It was, it, 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 her bro smelled like it was two butt naked people that then babe <gasps> was sitting out on a beach and were using the beach as her tone. <gasps> And they was just out saying, what it y'all... It smelled like uh, bounce that ass. Yeah, bounce Dang. that ass, bounce that ass, bounce that ass. Yeah. Bounce that ass. Yeah, What's so Did it work? Did it, it work? I think her tongue white. And it, I, the white sandy beaches. Now, let me... I'm about to judge you. Her tongue was white. Did you let her give you head? Actually, I, no, because, oh. no, because you know why? It, I was getting the funniest smell from, you know what I'm saying, what? kissing. I was getting kissed right here. I was like, is that funniest or... I know I ain't had no bologna. You feel what I'm saying? But, Not bologna the bologna. Yeah, and bologna oh. don't smell right when you first open the pack. So let me. So when you got her the toothbrush, she probably did it had change? a rotten tooth. Or she something. probably had halitosis. No, no she probably had a rotten tooth. I think she just kept forgetting the brush. That's why I got it. Forgetting? Yeah, no. forgetting to brush the teeth. Like so I, I told you about my friend I had in college that I used to have to make her brush her teeth. So it's believable. But I when just, I got that gold toothbrush, she was brushing every day. Boy, I was getting sloppy top every week, and it was oh, better. It yes, I'm talking about. I was actually had toothpaste left down there. I was like, "You just doing too much now." Oh, she started brushing too hard. <laughs> like, like so, it was, I was a like, solid. I was like, "Is that toothpaste?" That's a crest ring. Oh, like, <laughs> so it was a solid gold toothbrush. No, so you know how you get. It's like a. Oh, um, play. So it was. I think. I like, didn't know they. I'm asking. You I'm ever being seen? Treated. Let me ask you a question. You ever seen them steaks? Like it's oh yeah, gold that's plate. Oh, so you, yeah, okay. so you got the gold, gold wrap on it. You know what I'm saying? Got so, it. Yeah. Okay. Just what's so the, she can be. What's proud the most of. expensive thing you ever bought a woman? Now the girl's about to slide in your DMs. I'm letting you know right now they're coming for you. I mean, um, a, a ring. Like, um, I bought my ex fiance a nice ring. Ooh. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm that was when I think I think we was just I think it was like like seventy five, eighty thousand, something like that. Mm. That's mm-hmm. a lot of money. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That is. That's a nice little penis. Did you let her keep it? I mean, it after but that's, broke uh, up? that was the, no. <laughs> God damn, it's stricken this motherfucker. <laughs> that's how it goes. You know, it's a gift. You said if I go, it's a gift. Go. You gave it to her as a gift. So if no, y'all... but but we had a, we had an engagement that was called off. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it. it, it, it you're supposed to take the ring back if the wedding don't go through. 
because I got because I got I had to take the ring back and see who was out there for me. Oh, really? so you you can't reuse the ring. ring. You can't reuse yes. the ring. You got to get a different ring. I don't oh, like that. I'm, of course I got a different ring. Okay. But, but you're saying you had it. to swap trade, it out. Like a little swap tray. Out, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. I can get with All that. All right. I thought you were saying he was Yeah, I was in my 20s. Ring. You know what okay. I'm saying? Well, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Now, if I was engaged to somebody, I would definitely feel some type of way if he tried to take the ring back. But honestly, I'm not going to lie, though. I wouldn't want to see the ring every day. Like, I would probably try to get some money for it or something because it represents, like, something that... Failed. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I get, I kind of get why men take the ring back, but we don't like take backs over here. Do you I take mean, gifts? But, but no, because like at, I, I remember at one point in my life, I gave everything I owned to a woman. Mm -hmm. You do, you do mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like car, house, all that. You that coochie was gripping you. It wasn't that the coochie was gripping, the woman was worth it. Period. The, the, human, the, actual, the actual human. You dig what I'm saying? What was between her legs was a bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that's right. I like that. I do so, like that. So, yeah, so with you not drinking, obviously, that's kind of yeah. you. Well, not kind of. That is you revamping yourself. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to talk about, you know, you revamping yourself and mm -hmm. then signing new artists to Sauce mm -hmm. Music Group. Well, it's red line now. So mm -hmm. it's, it's red line because I feel like when you draw the red line, it's, it's, it's like it, it represents blood. It represents the heartbeat. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Um... To, to actually go to the rehab and um, come out not using anything and not drinking, it makes it it makes more sense to sign people mm. because everybody could be on the sign to you know somebody. But if I'm out doing the same shit you're doing, like I don't think you want to trust me with your right. career. You know what I'm saying? Like that well, makes I, it I, I fuck with Joe with shit. I'm with Joe throwing like, let me get ten perk, bro. And you stand I'm like, bro, what is you doing? Right. You feel right. what I'm saying? So I feel like um You gotta lead by example. Lead by example. I, yeah, I wouldn't want to be signed to nobody that I that I see out using drugs, you know, a thousand different women. Mm. This is gonna show up. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you have no stability. You know what I'm saying? So you have to cut all that shit off and run that shit like a boss. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I know my legacy is not going to look good if I'm out using drugs and drinking and, and dealing with this chick, dealing with that chick. It's right. going to eventually affect the business. You feel right. what I'm saying? So you got to boss up. I think that's what... What's up, y'all? This your girl, Lex P. And I'm here to tell y'all about a brand new podcast that y'all going to absolutely love. Now, if Poor Minds is your tea, this is going to be your tea, too. Our favorite girl, Kiki Palmer, has a new podcast called Baby. This is Kiki Palmer, and it's going to be available on Amazon Music. Kiki has a lot of burning questions that keep her up at night. She's putting friends, family, and some of the hottest experts in the hot seat to ask them the real questions we want to know. Like, where would former child stars be if they weren't actors? These are the questions running through Kiki's mind, and she's been letting us in on it all. Because on Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, no topics are off limits. So if you want to talk about dating, weird, crazy questions like, where is Tom from MySpace? This is going to be the podcast you want to listen to. She's going to have friends, family, experts, all of that sitting in the chair next to her. And she's going to ask all the hot questions. Y'all know Kiki is just like us, real messy. She's going to get to the T. So make sure y'all check out Baby. This is Kiki Palmer, available on Amazon Music app. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know we are here to talk to y'all about HelloFresh. Groceries are super expensive. Everything be sold out. It's actual craziness in the supermarket right now. Yes, absolutely. And March is National Nutrition Month. Mm. So it's very important, you know, normally for you to always monitor your portions. Mm -hmm. But specifically this month, you need to be trying to make sure you're eating right. So HelloFresh has a lot of meals right now mm -hmm. that are under 700 calories. And they have very low sodium. Yes, I love to be in a calorie deficient, y'all. I'm telling y'all, that is the best way to go mm -hmm. when you're trying to lose weight, get it right and tight. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to HelloFresh.com backslash PoorMinds60. That's HelloFresh.com backslash PoorMinds60. You're going to get 60% off Plus free shipping, y'all. This is all fresh food that's going from the farm straight to your dough. Yes, and 
to give an example. Ooh, what you had this week, girl? I had the one pan pineapple salsa turkey tacos. They mm. were so delicious. I love a turkey taco. I love mom. a turkey taco, and I love me a pineapple, too. Okay. You know what they little, say. I had a little side of bean with it. Okay. HelloFresh.com backslash PoorMind60. Get your eat on, please. Period. <laughs> We see a lot, man. It's so, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's a lot of people that I looked up to. And now that I'm in this space, I meet them and I'm so disappointed. Or, like, you see them really ruin their legacy over just, like, trying to keep up and be online and mm -hmm. do this and something. It's like, damn, like, you going outside like that? Like, you was X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, when you walked in, real quick, before we get in, because we hadn't even gotten to the topics yet. But Show show everybody your phone. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Show everybody your phone. Hold please. on, this Oprah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah, <laughs> you hey, can't bitch, call me. I, <laughs> bitch, I am weak. Well, I, I, Oprah said, I mean, not Oprah. I'm talking about Oprah. What Nikki said in this song? Bitch, I've been hot since flip phone. <laughs> I mean, this nigga still no. got a flip phone. So, what can you exactly do on that phone? Just text and call, Nothing. right? Text you and call. know what you can do? You had one. So, Auntie O. Dude, I ain't had that phone since I was like six. This is actually we a new, this is a new one. flip phone, bro. They make new Not ones. You bought yeah, a new one. I they bought a new one. I ain't, this ain't like from back in the day. Like, like I ain't get this motherfucker from MC Hammer. <laughs> but listen. Well, we know it ain't that big. Look, but... so, so let, me, let me explain why. Okay. I, okay. I have um, in, Instagram, social media, I have a problem with that. You okay. feel what I'm saying? It's... It's, it's, a, it's a discipline thing because it messes with my mind from what I feed it. If I keep feeding myself picture after picture, mm. booty after booty, like guns, shootouts, this here, this Rolls Royce, how he's living, how she's living, how that, if I feed my mind and then mostly negative stuff. So I'm keep feeding my brain this. Mm -hmm. What I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start putting this type of stuff out. Right. So I shut off all social media and to actually discipline myself I, I, because I can't, I couldn't stop. You feel me? Mm. I'm, I'm st I stay flipping on Facebook who, what they doing. I'll go from Facebook to TikTok. Then I go to TikTok, see what they doing. Then I go to Instagram. But all of it is not good. In, in, right. Like, it's not good content. It's not good in, in, information for me. Right. And I'm very uh, persuasive or I'm very influential. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I can get influenced really. Mm -hmm. Quick that's good that stuff. you can recognize about yeah. that about yourself and say that. So I, I think bought, a lot of people don't. Yeah, so, so that's I, really good. I bought the flip phone because it's just text and call. You know what I mean? And it, it shows it it shows me that I can get more done. Mm. You know, I use my time wisely, and I have I I, I I reply different if you ask me a question. I mean, you gotta. Do it, one, two, three, four, five just to put A. You're right. So I, I I really don't even really want to text much. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's it's almost like I found more valuable stuff to do with my time other than flipping through mm -hmm. apps. I mean, but I, I think that's thousand really percent important. agree with you because sometimes like I put an actual there's a thing on your phone that you can limit your time on social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it always goes off when I reach that time limit because I realized that for myself too. Like I'm waste so much time on social media, just scrolling, consuming content that doesn't better me as a person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me. Rather mm -hmm. than just make you feel like you're not doing enough, or that you're inferior to somebody who don't got shit going on. But I also. For me, I agree with you when you said that it's just wasting time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so many other things that you could just be doing with your day. It's not even always about, like, watching what other people are doing. Mm. I could just be doing more things with my day and being more productive. I did I did a fast last month, mm. and one part of my fast was, like, me doing, like, intermittent fasting mm. as far as eating, but I also did it with social media. Right. So from 12 p.m. to 12... I mean, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., that was the only time that I could be on social media. Mm. And even though I'm not still doing it like that, I still limit my time that I stay on Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff because it just really don't be nothing on there. To it, be it, on it, it, once time, it repeats you know? itself, it just get redundant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, um, so what I did do was try the two-hour... I tried mm -hmm. the two-hour limit myself, mm -hmm. but it still... It wasn't enough for me, mm. you know what I'm saying? So I really took off from, before I, before I got this phone, I just got off social media for a year. Mm. You know what I mean? A whole year? A whole year. 
So how do you feel like you stay in the know of like yeah, what's do you going feel like on? That affects I, your I'm, I'm, so. I'm so street. I, it really is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's in me. That makes sense. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. I know the who's who and right. what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because it, you know to give the gal just on city. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my pound of them city, and and then I had to actually, I I just man, I cut my circle down because it. it a lot of the information ain't even really worth knowing. Mm. Hey. You feel what I'm saying? Like they were like, you know what happened? I was like, that really ain't good information yeah. because I think I mean, that like what's what's where life is pushing me right now. I'm looking at people like Jay Z, and I you know I think about he ain't got no page. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it me? really ain't bothering him. Like to be, right, the, they the, live in him. Feel, but he know it. But 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 we so. we're into their lifestyle. Mm. So much. You feel what I'm saying? So, so I really want to use that as an example. And be like That's shit, man. Point. I'm handle myself like that. Y'all gonna want to know what's going on with me mm-hmm. instead of me want to know what's going on with y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm on this little run I'm on, man. And I want to be of service. I don't want to just be known as a, a good ass rapper. I want to be. My, I want my legacy to say he spoke up against gun violence against our okay. youth. He actually had. I have a mentoring program called Rare. Real acknowledge real everywhere. Mm. You feel me? So I'm taking. I'm using my body as service. You know what I'm saying? I want young men to be able to say, well, I heard Dro. He he kind of like made it out. He you know I I made a, a 360 on drugs and the women I de- dealt with and you know what I'm saying the places I hang. You mm-hmm. feel me? I stopped hanging with people I really love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just chose a different route. And I want to be able to mentor mentor young men from my era. Man, you don't have to be, you know, a product of your environment. Right. You don't have to be. You don't have to settle. You can you can actually change the narrative on your life and you can leave a legacy behind that's impeccable. Because, I mean, we really don't have enough of that going into, like, the social media stuff that I was asking because that makes sense because a lot of the, you know, like, the OGs in the game, mm. they trying to keep up with what right. they see on social media. They trying to keep up with the younger crowd right. and do that. So it's like you don't have a lot of, like, mentors and people that are really guiding the youth and telling mm. them, oh, hey, this is what you need to be doing with your money. This is what you need to be doing with your time. Mm. So that actually makes a good point. Now, let me ask you this before we actually get to the topics. I got oh, one more thing. Oh. Do you want to get married? Eventually, yes. Um, what I want to say about this, me and women, we kind of got like, we. it's a crazy ride with me and women <laughs> because I feel like drugs led me to choose and pick women that wasn't for me. Mm. You feel me? And once you're ciphering through money, fame, and drugs, and women, you end up picking the wrong one, just like I picked a lot of wrong friends. Mm-hmm. So I was sleeping with women that was dro, but not the one. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I felt like, I feel like I I do deserve to get married because that's something that's sacred on earth. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? So one day I do um, hope to get married, but I don't want to marry the wrong person. You just want to find the right person. Yeah, because yeah. I got a couple. I, I got a, my baby mom is Ooh. something else. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's just that's just God saying I did not tell you to sleep with that person. <laughs> yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like that was you just want. Or at least shoot up pick, the club. You know what you know, I'm saying? Y'all could have had a little fun, but you ain't had to shoot up the I club. I shot the club up. Like, yeah. How many kids you got? Three. Okay, and it's three one different baby, baby mom. moms. Three. <laughs> now you be cutting and, and, up. And and. It, it it came back to haunt me because now I have to raise my children under different roofs. Right. We have different we have different plans for each other. Right. Like now I'm on the straight path and doing what I supposed to do, and I live a certain kind of way. And the next household might not they agree might be with on that. The same way you feel you what I'm saying? So now I'm having to. Hey, look, I'm trying to convince the baby mama. Look, this is what I'm on. You need to be on this. You feel me? I would love for us to be one. You know, for me to be in the the right decisions and pick one girl and have all my children in the house right. and this is how it's gonna go. Right. But I'm stretched far I'm stretched out thin. It's kinda like a it's I'm a glad t- you said But that. that's what I was gonna say too. It's good that you've had the evolution of like realizing it. You know, because mm-hmm. it's like you can't be hard on yourself because people do things when they're yeah. young. Yeah. You, you know what, what I mean? Saying? And as yeah. you grow, you get older, you learn more, you do better. But it's good that you came to that realization because I mm-hmm. feel like you do have a lot of people, a lot of men that's out here and even me in your age and older mm-hmm. who still don't feel that way. Like they still feel like it's okay to have multiple households and mm-hmm. multiple 
baby keep mamas. creating multiple homes and having multiple baby mamas right. and having children under different households with women who don't see things the same way that they do. So it's good that you came to that place. The way these little boys dying now, if you say, oh, I ain't letting him listen to this, mm -hmm. and you send him over his mama house, they bumping all that. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? And, and so it don't make a difference. It's kind of like, it's going to be hard for you to grab him. You can lose him. You feel me? And, and like right now, I, I'm just praying to God that me and, me and God has, we're co-parenting too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm co-parenting with God and my baby mama. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But I really depend on him more to actually do the work for me when I'm not there. You know mm. what I'm saying? So it's it's been going well, though. So are you a kid's bop dad? I am. You did what I'm saying? Like, you are. I, I, I kind of like, I kind of like, I could see my, I could see myself through my kids, but I don't interfere. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I like just watching them and, you know. And letting them like express themselves express and Express themselves. Their own. I love giving them their own thought. Like that's what was wrong with a lot of kids now. We don't respect their thoughts. Mm. Yeah. We, don't we actually just them. talked about that the yeah. other week about yeah. um, a lot of parents putting pressure on their kids to maybe be like them or carry mm -hmm. on their like legacy yeah. or something like you got to let kids have their own let individual goals and dreams and yeah such. when they say right. something they mean it they yeah. Yeah, listen to it that's that's the law mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I like so it. we gonna get into the first topic yes finally yeah. so <laughs> kind of going into what we were talking about you know like i'm at a place in my life where I'm big on being around people who are self-aware and mm -hmm. can take accountability. Okay. I think that that's a character flaw that mm -hmm. a lot of people possess, that okay. they don't really want to acknowledge that they possess. But I feel like a lot of people are not self-aware and they lack accountability. Mm -hmm. So where are you at in life as far as like a space of how you deal with people like that or if you deal with them at all? Um... I, I I'm I'm doing I'm doing my accountability run right now mm -hmm. because I feel like um I was a different person. I was in I was I wasn't I was inexperienced, I was clumsy, mm -hmm. um um arrogant, you know what I'm saying? And I think that a lot of mistakes was made, mm -hmm. but I, I do want I do like straightening myself. You feel me? So if I'm around a person that doesn't do that, that's, it doesn't help me. You know what I'm saying? Right, I, I, it exactly. kind of pissed me off because I think you're, it's a mental health thing at this yep. point. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I agree 1,000%. Accountability is very tough, but I think people be wanting to hold, uphold an image like, I have to finish this out like I start. No. you know, If you have to look weird or you know what I'm saying? You, if you have to look crazy for your integrity, I would, you know, do so by all means. Right. Right. Yeah. I 100 percent agree. And I just feel like self-awareness, too, is just like people be really delusional. Mm -hmm. Like I see <laughs> certain stuff all the time online. Like it'll be like people, you know, in real life mm -hmm. and you'll see them say certain stuff online or do certain things online, which is actually counteractive to how they are yeah. in real life. <laughs> and it's kind of like, what world do you live yeah. in? You know what I mean? Because you portraying a whole different image on like the that. internet for people, mm -hmm. but in real life, you're not like that. But my thing is, why not be like that? Mm -hmm. Because the things you saying online is positive right. but in real life you're not really positive. that person right. so it's like why just not be that way instead of trying to portray a certain image and like you said it just goes into like mental illness mental problems for me I think I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes preach on that it, it's called imposter syndrome yeah you know what I'm saying we like, talked about it's, that before it's, uh, people people think certain things make them look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And guess what? The, men, the the crazy part about it is it satisfies them that they're not that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's it just, to, just to get you guys to believe it and then go, yes. home, and right. go home and be and not be, be shit. Be a whole different person. That's whole fucking different person. sick, bro. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. Like, man. But to, to actually, well, I think that what I could say is to help you guys, like whoever is going through that, I think therapy is good. Mm -hmm. You know Next. what I mean? Like, I think you should find somebody to talk to and actually let them pull out of you what why? you're missing. And you know, what's the why. going on. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? um, and I think, too, like, accountability is hard. It yeah. is so hard to be like, you know what? 
people, I don't know why, you know, and that goes into like, nobody wants to, of course, we don't put, want to put our L's on, on display. It nobody makes wants to, you know, say like, right. I'm wrong. But I will say it's like, but why not? Well, no, it makes you a little shame. At. Like, shame is, that that's shit tough. We right. talked about this we on did. the recent episode. We did. Bring, Bring back, back shame. shame. Mm -hmm. Niggas but ain't the thing shame is, no more. I think um, people look at the situation right now, and it's like, um, I'm not going to lie, like, I am a person, it is hard for me to take accountability. I remember me and one of my exes were arguing and I did something and in that moment he was like, this is what you said you were working on. And I was mm. like, you're right. You mm. know, and it was like, it really humbled me. I'm like, okay, so, cause in our minds you be thinking that you're a great person and everybody loves you and this and that. Right, right. So when people really start calling you out on your shit, you're like, okay, damn. So yeah. it's your decision if you want to do the work. Cause some people don't care. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, you know what? And I think me and you had had a conversation on um, on New Year's. And I was like, you know what? And he was like, okay, this is X, Y, Z that's going on and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I had a conversation with my sister. I was like, you know what? You're right. And that's why I was like, because in therapy, therapy don't work unless you're honest. Exactly. Because I've, you... I realized I've been in therapy this long and it's worked, but I wasn't being honest mm -hmm. with what I was really going through, how I was treating people around me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Moving forward, this is the person. And like she said, I want to become the person that people really view me as. Because I feel like on this show, everybody's yeah, like... Yeah, you have to be... Yeah, it has to be aligned. Like, it I does. think a lot of people, they be two different people. Facts. Like, you got your representative, mm -hmm. and then you got who you really are. Right. You know? And so a lot of people don't really care as long as people see their representative and think their representative is a stand-up person. Right. But in Facts. real life, when it come down to you, mm -hmm. are, are you, you really, really a stand-up person? person? And I think accountability is a weird thing, too, because a lot of people think that accountability is a Apologizing. Mm -hmm. And apology is not necessarily accountability. Because right. you can apologize, but still not really reflect on mm -hmm. and realize what you did wrong. Right. And admit and be like, okay, like I fucked up and this is what I need to do to not change or this is what I need to do to rectify. Because a lot of times, too, people think that apologizing is rectifying the situation. Mm -hmm. Just because you apologize don't mean that I'm okay. Still. Right. Yeah, and you also, have to express that. Yeah. You know what I'm An apology is just. One it's thing. an apology. That's really all it is. But sometimes it takes more action after that to I'm make the to. situation an better. Yeah, you have to 100%. express that. Right. Shit. Break that shit down. Because I've been in a relationship where I've apologized. I'm like, nigga, you sound sorry. Like, mm -hmm. you always talk about you sorry. Right. You know what but like, like, what and I believe you. But, <laughs> but what, but what yeah, else? Yeah, what but do? I also think that what I've learned is when you apologize to somebody, like, I had a situation where... Uh, I was the guy I was dating. He kept doing the same shit over again. He was apologizing, mm -hmm. but at the same time, when I stopped accepting his apology and I asked for the boundaries, mm -hmm. it was still not being respected. So that's how I know you haven't changed yeah, because you... account a part of accountability is like yes, you can apologize, but a part of accountability is taking the repercussions. Yeah. Like if somebody doesn't want to forgive you. That is their decision, and you have to respect their boundaries. You sure do. So it's like, hey, I fucked up. Yeah, you fucked up, but you got to take, you know, this is what you, you got to sit in. Uh, you know what I would have did if I was him? I would have been standing outside your window. I'm weird. And I would have been like, <laughs> please <laughs> don't. Oh, no, and I, I'm I'm oh, yes. But you oh. also can't guilt trip people. No, but that's not guilt tripping. I think that sometimes people, people do fucked up shit and then they be avoiding it. That's, and I think that's that, some bullshit. And I think that that makes people feel better because it's like, well, I fucked up and I tried to apologize or I tried to do this and then they were seeming like they wasn't receiving it so I'm going to just stop trying to reach out. But it's like, no, sometimes maybe you should take the extra step to go further. Yeah, in rehab, they teach you. If you in the you wrong. You have to go. Yeah. And, and guess what? When you say, I ain't fucking with you no more, guess what you're supposed to say? Well... I, I'm 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 gonna keep trying until this works. But if hey, you up. really don't want to forgive me, I'm gonna have to be good with that. Okay. But I'm always available if you want to talk about it. You feel what I'm saying? And you know, if it if anything changes your mind, I'm here. But if if, if we can work this out, I'm 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 definitely. That's a good to do point it. to make. Yeah. That's a very very good point. But like I said, I feel like and that goes. People just be having a lot of pride, though. I think but it's that just avoid, a pride. Yeah, thing. That, that avoid shit. Up. That shit is like that's like. 
ignoring a bullet wound. But I think people avoid you when they know they wrong. Yeah, that's my. But it tears away at their character, it. though. It eats it away, at them. Mm -hmm. and then and, you know it eats you. It eats you away as a, as a person, as a good person, because it make if, you look crazy yeah, in the light. If you because if you can ignore a bullet wound, that's insane. Yeah, you right. know if you can ignore something that you know you know you need to apologize. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I hear you walking around here, and you know damn well you just did me like and that. You didn't and like they just be nothing. walking crazy around fuck. so normal every yeah. day, <laughs> living their life. Fuck. She be crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so we are gonna get into the next topic. Go ahead. Can you be too old for a sneaky link? Because I'm 33, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not trying to sneaky link with nobody. I feel like at this point, we know people date each other. Right. We know people are fucking around, whatever. Why do we have to hide? And, I, and there's a difference between hiding somebody and being private. Let me say that. Mm. But I, I feel like sometimes, like, people want to have a sneaky link, and y'all don't even go out to eat. Y'all don't even go to the movies or y'all don't go on trips. Like, what is the big deal of being in the house all day, every day with somebody that you're dealing with? So, what we, so Sneaky Link or being in the house with, what, what, what I don't, like a Sneaky Link? A Sneaky Link is somebody you keep in the house. Okay, cool. So, look, put us on game, Drew. The Dro. Sneaky Link thing <laughs> is, it could go, it could be two things it could be a cheat. Or it could be that we're we're in this uh, we we got the same group of people we kicking it with, mm. and they don't know we fucking. You Ooh, know what I'm saying? But see, that's sneaky. Like, if you're in the same it's room, better, it's better than a, we, and they but, don't know it, we fucking. But it's better than a that's cheat, though. Sneaky, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's be, I'd rather have that. Like, say for instance, we all went to school together. Okay. And you know what I'm saying? And then we grew up, and then everybody know that. You know, I done seen you have guys, and you done seen me have girls. Uh -huh. and, you know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, <laughs> me and you start messing around, but we don't want to tell her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a good sneaky link. You're like, you know, you can't tell them I ain't in the house. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Shit like that. But that's at a certain age, when it's just, when did you like? Until Not we, care. Well, until you're ready to reveal it. Okay, that's You feel fair. what I'm saying? And, and, but, and then, like, the cheating sneaky link, I, sometimes, uh -oh. like, a grown motherfucker, well, like... Well, cheating... Are you a cheater? Have, are you, I've, I've been a cheater. Ooh. I have been a cheater. It's okay. But, but, but you know what? To, 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 to my, <laughs> now, to my advantage, <laughs> to my advantage, I had never been a one-moment man from the jump. Ooh. So, so you believe in polygamy? I don't even know what that means. Like you have more than you one believe partner. in multiple women. Oh, I most like, definitely believe in yeah. that. But, but but to to say I was a cheater would say he had one girlfriend. You mm. feel me? I never came with one girlfriend. Mm. It's just that you didn't know it. So when you settle down, you want to have multiple women. I don't. You want one? No, I want one because okay. I, I think I, I think just like to in my life of in my in my life that I've lived in and you know being a guy that. Put out a record that says my girl got a girlfriend. I right. think that I, I saw. I saw. I saw a lot of things, and I've I've been on the side to where my girl went so far as to go, you know, grab another girl and bring mm. her home. And, mm. You feel what I'm saying? And he was a wild young I, man. I, I, I had. I I used to. I used to live that life. You feel what I'm saying? Until I felt like. This ain't what I want, you know right. what I'm saying? And I've been the type of person that, you know, you know, if Keisha made me mad, I'm going over to Tamika house. Mm. You know, if Tamika made me mad, I'm going over to Tasha house. You feel what I'm saying? So what are you doing now when Keisha mad? I feel like those are all names of loyal women. <laughs> like I feel like Andre is not loyal. Yeah, I I think. You have you ever dated an Andrea? I think so. Was she loyal? Have, no. Have you ever dated a Lex? <laughs> Well, Alex. there your is Lord I'm playing. Because I am actually really loyal, but I mean, when I say <laughs> when I said those sound like the names of loyal women, I when I'm saying loyal, I mean women that would just be like, I'm a okay, hold it that's down. fine. That's I'm cool, a hold it down. I'm not a hold it down bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I am loyal though. Like if I love you and I fuck with you, mm -hmm. I'm She's loyal. loyal yeah. Like I'm not gonna and even with with my men, with my friendships, everything, like I'm a loyal person. You mm -hmm. ain't never gotta worry about your business, getting mm -hmm. out there, none of that type of shit. But I ain't going for whatever though. Keisha yeah. and Tamika, them names they sound like they gonna go, they gonna go for this shit. So let me say this. Right. Now today, draw or do you have sneaky links now? Be honest. No. No more I, you I out that face. But because like when I'm when I went when I'm when I went to actually get my 
brain straight, my mm-hmm. heart straight, mm-hmm. my action straight, my situation straight. I couldn't keep living the way I used to live. Mm. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Now, it was around, right around the corner, yes, but right now, a girl can't tell you like I, that I talked to her or like, like I'm not using like social media. I used to use that shit like to, to my advantage. Them, sure. Like you know what I'm saying. Not necessarily like necessarily to pull them. It's just that was just a plus because I've always been dapper and mm. you know what I'm saying dressed the way I dressed and looked the way in high right. school. So <laughs> when so when I was when I got on social media, that shit was just like oh shit, this is fucking. Oh, it's easy. You know what I'm saying? This like, light work. Just let me just tap tap tap. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's but, really all you gotta do. <laughs> but to actually, but to actually be where I'm at now, I get more of it because that's not what I do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not I'm not available for it. you anymore. And you're not thirsty. You're not in the girls' DMs. Me? And Period. then honestly, people literally miss like the importance of somebody who can hold a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like these. People, and I'm talking about men and women, cannot hold a conversation. Mm-hmm. And that's such a turnoff because it's like, as good as you look, as good as she looks, mm-hmm. as good as I look, what does that even matter if we can't talk and we can't mm-hmm. really have a connection beyond what we look like? And I was that not talking motherfucker. Because mm. guess what? I saw something and I tapped into it and I don't want to talk. Mm. Then what you doing? Mm. I don't know what. Where you at? You feel me? Let's go out now. Nah, who over your house? <laughs> you feel me? Like, yes. Who over your house? I'm on, I'm on the way over there. I'm I got over the roll up and got down. I thumb through. I'm gone. You know what I mean? So talking about coming up over there. Yeah. Yeah. And tap tap tapping. Yeah. Now it's time to get into, into the bed. Hey. <laughs> the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 Now, bow. Now, low key, I've been shoulder leaning every time we did that. Right. Yeah, get into the bed. Got down. Shoulder lean. Got down the bed. Know how to no. Foot so, around and got down bed. <laughs> so for the bed topic, okay. I wanted to talk about all coochie feeling the same. So <laughs> we be no, oh, right, right. I agree. My sentiments exactly. exactly. So it was a tweet, and this guy has said something about like all coochies, like y'all be tripping because all coochie feel the same or whatever. So then this woman actually posted like a grid of like different x-rays mm-hmm. of like different vaginal ca- canals, I guess, vaginal canals and showing how different vaginas are shaped differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so she was just like, first of all, that's some bullshit. Mm-hmm. All coochie can't feel the same because people pussies literally be shaped. The anatomy be shaped is different. different. So I wanted to talk about that because you do have some people who try to say, like, all pussy feel the same. Mm-hmm. I'm a nut regardless. I'm a nut regardless. Mm-hmm. And then you got me and they be like, nah, coochie feel nah. different. And personally, I don't know because I, I mean, why? Well, I kind of know. It's a little different. I, well, no, I kind of know because I and I done fucked with girls before too. So, but as a man, <laughs> but but as a, I obviously never felt it from a man's perspective, perspective. which okay. I feel like is obviously a little different. Okay. But I I don't feel like all coochie is equal. Mm, I don't either. I to 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 to, to be honest. He said the Braxton Hart. Oh. To be honest I with you. To be. To be honest, or not. <laughs> to be honest with you, I have. I have had. <laughs> I have had so many shapes and forms of the coochie. Yes. And and the coochie. I the I I had the coochie on a beautiful woman. Yes. Like if if ten was the maximum you can yeah, go. Yeah, she was. This there. motherfucker was a thirty. She was a thirty. But the Ooh. pussy was really what? garbage. Oh, you oh feel me? God. Was really not that well. Can I pray tell why? Like what mm-hmm. makes bad? What makes the coochie bad? It. it Mm. What made it bad? Was it like dry? It was, was it, it shallow? was it was it was it was mediocre. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that it was it was something about it that made it, you know, I, I cheated like repeatedly, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. and then everybody used to be like, you cheating on her? I'm like, yes, because <laughs> it was a it. big problem. You know what I mean? It just wasn't that coochie poo. It, it was it was that what I used to call her. That's what I used to call her, like, call her coochie poo. But, <laughs> <laughs> hey coochie poo, you know what I'm saying? You lying. She was like, I stopped calling me that I was like coochie poo. You coochie poo? <laughs> you is liar. Coochie poo? Coochie that poo. Is, <laughs> y'all can we name it? Can we name it? I thought that would all get in flag. Uh, I don't know. It might get flag. I think it might get 
coochie flat. We gonna try. Coochie pool, pool is, is crazy. crazy. Funny. Coochie what pool. makes a coochie pool though? Like it just wasn't. It wasn't wet. <laughs> it went, I think she I like, couldn't take the dick. Like what is it? What oh exactly God. is it? I don't. It was something. I think. I think she she ain't let me like slut her out like you feel me it wasn't mm. it wasn't sl- it wasn't it was sloppy I like I'm I'm a, I'm a like I like squirters Ooh. you know what I'm saying like if once once it squirt like at first I thought it was pee but then it wasn't because she squirted on the sheets and they was white and it wasn't yellow Damn, why did you think oh, I was about to say why did you because think one pee? time it smelled different from another girl. Ooh. That was pee. I was like, that's pee. She had pee. to let it out. She couldn't make it to the bathroom. I was like, that's pee. She was, and then she was looking at me. She had to, I should have went. She was mad. She said, I'm a squirter. Yeah. She, <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Bitches get yeah. mad if you call them oh out for pee. Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> 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 But this is the thing. I only, I only said that. <laughs> I'm probably talking too much <laughs> because somebody y'all know told me that. What? <laughs> told you what? It was like they thought they squirted, but they peed. And a nigga was like, "This smell like pee." And yeah, yeah. she was, and she she was like, like "No, I squirted." Mm-hmm. So that's why I was like, "I'm a squirt." <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, you but, pee. But I'm saying, because the things you named, because there's a difference between bad coochie and bad sex. Like, yes, a woman can yes, have good yes. coochie, but her sex is boring. Mm. Okay, cool. That that was that. So that was coochie be... poo? Did she have bad coochie? It was bad, or bad but, sex. It was. I think it was a combination of both. Mm. But you can't have. Ain't no fix. You can't it. have good sex with bad coochie, though. I mean, you can have a girl that turns. No, but you can have. But you can have. Good sex. No, wait. You have good coochie. Mm, never mind. She no. was almost there. But the reason I say... <laughs> it, 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 she was it, saying it, it you, have, you can have good coochie and bad sex. Like, your coochie mm-hmm. feels good, but the sex, you're kind of boring. Yes, you yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes, yes. cool. So I, that, I, I knew what you were going. Because it's boring. Right. Like, she... Okay, the pussy good. Like, I'm like, damn, this some good pussy. But, like, she, she ain't doing she ain't, that. She do the same she, position all the time. Right. She don't flip over. She don't know she how to throw it back. Right. You know? Right. And, and then, like, I think... Wetness is it plays a big part. Yeah, hello. It, you know let's saying? talk like, about you it. You gotta be wet, but that's on the guy. You feel Bex. me? It's not the girl's job to be wet. Toss like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. if, if the nigga coming in, motherfucker, and he look like like um like he wear like corduroy suits and stuff. Like like if he like if he wear if he wear like a a blue jean suit, he probably ain't gonna get you that wet. Who you feel what I'm saying? Blue jeans? If, a if, if a nigga wear a blue jean suit. suit with a members only jacket, this nigga is not getting you wet. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm not now, gonna lie. If a, now, if a nigga came in that motherfucker with a silk shirt but let me on say with, this with it though. open, this the nigga girls' coochie get, get wet even before y'all made it to the bedroom. Because if a nigga walk up and he got that walk, he got that talk, he talking to me right, I'm wet before we even step and in the bedroom. And that's how girls be fucking niggas with corduroy suits because he right. Because one of my friends took me on a date with them, and that nigga had on blue jeans and a blazer. Did she fuck him, though? No. I don't know. Ooh. I didn't go home with them. That nigga had on blue jeans and a blazer? That's like a child support court outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga, that nigga, that nigga with courtroom blue, like. That nigga was like <laughs> but I will say, a lot of times, blue jeans and sometimes a blazer. women do get aroused, and they feel like they don't get wet. Like, I've had People actually like ask me questions. Like they ask us questions all the time about everything. Mm. But some like if you feel like oh this man turns me on but I'm not getting wet, it really just gets down to health. Yo coochie gonna get if you drink water, yo coochie gonna get wet. Like coochie gonna get wet with penetration anyway. But it's mm. like y'all well, be we taking the culprit. No, bitches do not be drinking. They water. don't drink water. If you drink water, yo coochie gonna be. Dripping just because you already turned on, but it's just like that extra water just coming on out of you. Let me tell you something. If you drink your gallon of water a day, that nigga ain't gonna know what to do. I we've been told y'all this. Yes. So is. dry coochie means that she don't drink water. I I, I like You thought I, it was when, just heredity. When I was young, <laughs> I hit a girl, like she was dry, but she she was saying hurry up a lot. So it seemed like she was like, hurry up, just hurry up. I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably like she probably like did it at a lot of truck stops. I don't know. No, she probably she probably just knew her coochie only stay wet for a certain amount of time. time. So she was like, so hurry she up. had the Cinderella effect on that moment? Hell yeah. 
Yeah. She had to fuck with the glass slipper on. That motherfucker with that slipper gone. That be like, you know what? It's over. Hey. Now, bro, I don't be wanting to be. be I don't be wanting to be repetitive, but we have talked about this on the show before, and mm. this is our theory. You can let me know if mm. you think we wrong. If your coochie is dry, it's your granny fault. Facts. Your grandma. Wet coochie is hereditary. My grandmama is a saint. Well, yeah. she used to be. Gertrude used to I be busting it open. I am an advocate for if your pussy dry, it is hereditary. It's definitely hereditary. I feel like it's passed down from generation it to is. generation. It is. Because guess what? Guess what? Your body has glands, right? So if I'm a sweater, obviously that's something that runs in my family. If I'm a squirter, it runs in my family. So if I'm dicking the bra down, mm -hmm. yeah. she be like, you got some good dick. I pull to, to be like, nigga, my granddaddy got Yeah! That. Yeah! <laughs> Earl told me. Earl <laughs> shut like, you know. My it's granddaddy just, Eddie told me to. Mm, it's mm, certain mm, things mm, that's mm. just hereditary. It's just like if you get a gap. You know, yes. if, your, if your daddy had a gap, and now you got a gap. It really is good coochie. I if definitely feel that way. If your grandma had hips, and now you got hips. To be honest with you, to 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 think about Green it, eyes. the girl that coochie poo, her grandmama was <laughs> kind of like. She wasn't that girl. She was like. Not that girl. <laughs> she was like corny looking. <laughs> I should have knew this. Your grandma was corny. Poo. Not Coochie Poo Junior and Coochie Poo Senior. Coochie Poo come from a long line of Coochie Poo. Even Coochie, no, it was the grandma. I started with the grandma, so she Coochie Poo the third. Good. Your grandma wasn't shit. <laughs> if grandma, did you go to? Her, did you ever go to her granny house? That's what I'm saying. I saw her. Did she have plastic on the sofa? Um. <laughs> now she was pretty. Uptight, you know what I'm saying? She's like she had a broomstick in her ass. But did she have plastic on the sofa? Cause you know what they had the plastic on the sofa. What? You know no. why? Squirter. Squirter! Hey, your grandma got <laughs> plastic on the couch. She let hey, look, that motherfucker loose. You know what though? My grandmama had plastic on her sofa, <laughs> and I ain't fucking with y'all. I'm not fucking with y'all, no, bro. That I ain't doing it. I don't even want to talk about it because grandma I love that grow. goddamn sofa. Not Granny Drew. Granny Drew was letting it loose. Or my shall my, we say Granny Drew? My grandma, <laughs> was, <laughs> my grandma was a saint. <laughs> All right now. She was a saint. All right now. Oh my God. Get a grip. She was saved. <laughs> get a grip, everybody. I'm so hurt right now. <laughs> oh I'm so hurt. Granny Drew. I'm is so wild. sorry for the slander, Coochie yeah. Poo. It's not a slander. It just is what it is. I like, feel like we owe Coochie Poo an apology. We don't owe yeah, Coochie Poo yeah. an apology. It's Coochie Poo the third. You dig what I'm because saying? Because it came from a long <laughs> line of Coochie of Poo. Of bad Coochie. So we don't, I do feel that way, though. Yeah, I it's, definitely feel that way. Yeah. It's so I mean, scary. I'm not going to lie to you. The way I grew up and everything that happened to me, I know my mama had I me. hate what I be thinking you always about to say. Yes. I thought you was about to oh. say the way I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> but facts, too. I remember one time I was having sex. I said, damn, this motherfucker is lethal. Let me tell you something. Well, like, I, 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 I've, had, I've had sex with a girl that know how to... Yeah. I used to be like, she'd be like, you feel that? I'd be like, oh, And y'all feel it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, she know how to make that thing beat. It, I, I thought she was like... I thought she had a pair of isotoner gloves in that motherfucker. Like, now, that see, motherfucker was gripping. That grip. That yeah, grip. That but it's hereditary. Food, I feel like you know, as a woman... I really do feel like you know when you have good coochie. I think some girls say, like, oh, I got good coochie because it just sound good to say it. But I think when you know, you really know. Yeah, you Hands know. down, the best coochie I ever had, she made, she pulled the rub off with the muscles. Oh, I'm shit. Here, I'm, I'm doing my job as going in as a protected young man. Man, she motherfucking won't, won't, and won't. I was like, Ooh. Motherfucker, go. I was like, I was like, where that motherfucker? Now that's go? the can you woo woo woo. That's crazy. I'm but adopted. She... Maybe we related. I'm trying... <laughs> <laughs> no, I really am. Maybe that's my sister. I'm trying to tell you, but yank that motherfucker. Okay, off. so how do? Oh, but, and before we move on, oh. yo, think about your best eater. <laughs> your best. I I don't like Eater. that word. Eater sounds so like vulgar. You, you know your best, you know the best? Oh, she eat it up. Right. She eat it up. <laughs> Was you sad? Like when you lose your best eater, how do you feel? Like, um, like, it's, almost, like it's almost like, well, let, like a girl that, that, that eat it up to the maximum. Eat it up? You, know what you can't saying? trust her. Nah, like when she leave, <laughs> you feel like Brandy is sitting up in my room. <laughs> Back in thinking about you. I'm a miss for you. 
know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like when they leave, it be like, you damn. know what I'm saying? You have to roll one for that shit. Like, you yeah. know, back, back in my smoking days, you know, uh -huh. it be like, damn, damn, shot. <laughs> Ate it up. So yeah. niggas do shot, be missing. Shot got down there and left a nigga got down. You so y'all be missing y'all best eater. Hell yeah. Mm. I remember one time girl gave me so, so head so good, it felt like my dick had disappeared. <laughs> I ain't lying. Not manish. I was in that moment. Not about a big bop. Where it go? Where it go? Bippity boppity boo. No hand, motherfucker. Look, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. So we got I the answer. I am weak. You have answered all the questions. You have. Yeah. That, oh, look, okay. we love We it. love somebody to answer all the questions. So now we gon' get, get into, into the bow. Hey. The bow. Bow. The bow. 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 bow, bow, bow. bow. Okay, so bop of the week. Uh, my bop of the week, y'all know I'm on my Afrobeat shit right now. I told y'all it's about to get warm. We outside. We on vacation. Well, I hope you're not about to say my bop. It's an Afrobeat song? Oh, I, I think this might be too deep in the Afrobeat's bag. So okay. I think you say. So um, I my uh, bop of the week is a song called So So by Amale. Mm -hmm. Um... It just gives the vibe. Now, this, now, I told y'all the music sometimes, you know, it gives Tim's vacation. Now, this is the song, like, you in the club. And you and y'all, like, if you fuck with Nigerian Bay, like, you gotta dance. You gotta know the, the, the dances. Like, when I started, you know, y'all know I love me a little Nigerian man. Mm -hmm. So you gotta know the dances. You gotta know the words. I'm really putting y'all on game. You know, them Nigerian be smelling. That's the dance. They that's that's like, see, don't do that. You know, that them Nigerian be smelling like Shiloh. Oh! <laughs> Shiloh. I'm not laughing. Oh, I heard the boy Pee Wee Longway going. Bless the boy smell like Shiloh. You that know what? I wonder what they smell I, like. Honestly, they just are don't coming know. for you. I got that from Pee Wee Longway. <laughs> they they can't come not. for him, no, because we all are descendants. Hello. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And I would say I've been this. musty a couple of times. It's okay. Everybody be musty okay. sometimes. Yeah. And you know what? I feel like the purple onion. It, it, be the, it be the niggas that be musty in the club. Yeah. The American niggas <laughs> that be musty in the club. See, I, but think I was stank. Be see, uh, when an American niggas stank, they be really stank. But Nigerian people just carry it. Like, they be no, like, No, they do not. They be like, Come on, stank. <laughs> and, be, and the stank be walking behind the top. Where you be going? You feel what I'm saying? Shit. Not where are we going. <laughs> <laughs> I do not vouch for this conversation. I'm just talking shit. And all my kids smell good. <laughs> Dre, what's your pop? Child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weak. What's your bop? Okay, so my bop is people. <gasps> oh, that was my bop the other week. This guy, I told what you she's going to be listening. What is people that? is fire. People is by, by uh, Libyanka. Libyanka. Oh, it's, it's a song it's a basically vibe. about... Um, a girl just going through it. So the first line is like, I've been drinking more alcohol in the past five days. Mm -hmm. Did you check on me? Mm. And like, she's talking about she's smoking, she's doing all this stuff and nobody checking on her. Mm. And she's just going through it. It is such a beautiful song. She needs a therapy. She needs a therapy yes. for sure. And a friend. And a yes, friend. And but we, this is my song from the New Year's episode. Mm. Oh. That's how I told y'all. A little drama. No, I mean... I be listening, but I just catch we on. We it's a lot well, of Well, I mean, no, I just be, I feel like we can have the same bop again. Facts. Like, because I, I think be people need to be reminded because yeah. they didn't get on it hard enough. Mm -hmm. so that's, yeah, that's it's, it's a fucking fire song. And I actually like her as an artist. She actually has a lot of other music. She does covers, but now she's like making original music. And yeah, she's actually really dope. So mm -hmm. shout out to the Afro Beats. And I be making playlists too now, y'all. What you got for us? So... <laughs> Man, I got a fire Afrobeat. So I have a I have a gospel playlist that I encourage y'all to listen to. It's really, really good. Never would have made it. It's called Morning Worship. It's by me, you know, Dre and Nicole. You got to drop it in the... In a... I'm going to put the link in the bio. I listen to this every morning when I do my routine, when I write in my journal mm. and stretch and pray. I think y'all should all listen to it. It's pretty good. I love to praise the Lord. Because, you know, I started... And I've been telling them I was going to make... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just agreeing with you about the journal writing because I stopped writing in my journal. Oh. And I've been writing in my journal every night and it's just done wonders. Yeah, I do it in the morning. So I wake up. 
I play my music, I stretch, mm. I brush my teeth, I do all of that stuff, and then I go to the gym. But yeah, you be in that it, gym, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and it definitely gets me right. And I feel like it's good to have a morning routine, and I think you for always sure. need to make time for God every day. I you know? agree, And I think for some people, you don't, you might not necessarily always have the time to, like, read the Bible and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's good to, like, listen to your morning worship, Facts. pray, write in your journal. And just so... Show- Gratitude, man. So we went from bops to to God. Well, no, it was we went from dick. No, bop. we went from sucking dick to good coochie mm. to music to God. Oh. And that's the great thing about poor mom. Multifaceted show. So Period. what have you been listening what to? What you been listening to, Mr. Dro? Mr. Dro. Um, I've been listening to well, I listened to this song, mm-hmm. but I transferred it to like in a girl's. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what I um, consider uh, good head. <clears throat> okay. So oh, that's why, that's why you ain't want us to be talking about why, because you was about to <laughs> get you really bad. It's real easy. You wanna hear, here you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I like the little redhead girl. You think I'm feeling you? That makes a... <laughs> That was just my bop on the last episode. I'm <laughs> looking for me a munch bitch, man. You feel me? You want a munch? Just a bitch, 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 you know, munching, munching, munching. Oh, if you, if Yo, <laughs> bitch, you he look, he said he looking for his best eater. He taking submissions. You know submissions right now. So if you a good eater, oh, actually, you got to catch she, him on the flip I phone. I love the licking she for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think I'm feeling you? <laughs> oh, wait. Shout out to Ice Spice. Yes, you know, yeah. I love Ice Spice. Yo, you do, you do. I do. I like, I like her because I won't say like I'm a fan of the music. Like I don't get in my car and turn it on. Um, I'm more of a, a Meg girl myself, a Ken the Man girl myself. I'm all of them girls. Yeah, you are them girls. Um, but I, I like Ice Spice's personality because she's herself. She's not trying to sound like nobody. Right. She's not trying to do get on nobody else's wave. She got her natural hair flowing, and she's just her, so I can respect that. Man, I heard that shit. I went against sturdy. Mm. You yeah. went against sturdy? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Low key, Joe. Yeah. I think you can dance. Nah, I was just kidding. No, I think you can low key dance. <laughs> now in my head, I can. Like I be at home, like, well, I'ma kill this shit when I learn, but you I don't can. never learn, so I don't never kill it. And then you see you yourself on video, and myself, and you be I be like, like nah. what the fuck happened, mm-hmm. man? You, you I can tell you got a little rhythm though. Yeah, man. I got jiggly legs, and I not jiggly legs. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Mm. I, it look like I be busting a nut when I be down. I be like, oh, shit. That's maybe good. The girls might see that and be like, oh, it shit. It be like I be doing the robot. You know, <laughs> this nigga nut. I'm uh, it's weak. Coming. <laughs> I'm so weak. Now, now I want to see you dance. <laughs> I, I want to see what it's looking like. I'm sure you. I want to <laughs> see a little one, too. Shit. Okay, so now we got the item of the week. Item of the week is an item that we love, that we swear by, that we use. So, Jarea, what you got for us this week? Okay, so this week I have glow recipe. I thought that was a vibrator. Now, see what your mind... Oh, Drow is is done for the day. His (laughs) mind is in the gutter. There's no getting him out. Hi, did you sneak a little (laughs) Casamigos in that (laughs) mock? No, this is him. He been like this since he walked through the building. Oh, my God, bro. I know when he went out that flip phone. I I thought thought I heard something. She was like, it works. And I was like, oh, my God. Glow recipe. So, this is glow recipe. Mm. It is the watermelon glow nine centimide dew drops. Mm. I love this product, especially because, you know, like Lex and I both, we don't really wear makeup like that unless we recording or have to be on camera. So for every day, I love this product. It gives my skin such like a dewy look Mm -hmm. and I just feel refreshed. I feel like, you know, Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I said, low key, we really need to start doing more on TikTok because the Glow Recipe just did a whole trip. Yeah. And I'm like, but we got to figure out how to monetize like correctly. The brands, they don't be in like the podcast world. They're always like on the influencers on Instagram and TikTok. So, but we should have been on that trip, bitch. I don't know if like Javier can like zoom into my hand, go but ahead, I feel like we on. should. And go like this. You got to go like this. We should start doing like a. Uh, tutorial example. demonstration. Period. But like, look how dewy my my hand looks. So imagine mm. this all over your face and after washing your face. I used to face. use that product. For- now, I changed to a different product, but let me say this. My makeup <laughs> now, I did my makeup in 10 minutes today. 
So if you can look at my face, I did my makeup at 10. It, the more you take care of your skin, the less time you're going to spend putting on Absolutely. makeup. Absolutely. Yeah. I did my makeup in 10 minutes today, literally. I was like, I don't feel like doing a whole, you know, one, two. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I actually like that product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And it smells amazing. amazing. Hey, look. So it smells really good. Who, Are you in skincare? Who makes that? Glow. Glow. Glow Recipe. That's Glow the name recipe. of the company. How about let's come up with our own. We're going to call it Poor Beauty. Ooh! I have, I have a cosmetic company she called has, Muse Beauty. She has cosmetic already. You know but, it, See, but I want to be, you uh, I want to be partners in it, and I want to actually tell the women what I like as a man. Because well, I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm always looking for a sponsor for yeah, Muse, you know and saying? you do have nice skin. I want to, yeah, I want to be a part of it. You dig what I'm saying? Because I don't think guys are, you know, most guys are like, I ain't doing no gay ass shit like that. But I think right. that we can actually be a part of it because the women buy it for us. You know, I want to look good for my man. I want to be smelling a certain type of way. So why not be, you know, CEO or CFO or CEO with and let's chat because we were just having a conversation. Oh, yeah. About you yeah, like getting your nails done. Yeah. They look magnificent. They're, they're a nice cool. little manicure. Cool. Oh, and your, wait, your hands are really They soft. are soft. They are? Yeah, because I, I was a drug dealer. I wasn't really a, a working. We I started heard. I started off doing uh carpenter work. They and don't then, feel like it. But that because I started making a lot of money, so I was just. So what do they do when you go get your your manicures? Do they like do a mask, a peel? Because uh -uh. your hands are really they already soft. soft. Yeah. So I mean, you have nice they hands. just they just thank you. I know that's right. Yeah. So. And they're nicely manicured. Yeah. Nicely they. Manicured. I used to. My hands used to look very different. <laughs> my lifestyle used to be different because I used to like gamble a lot, like and like. Streets, the streets was just like tough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I used to drive like when I used to be driving and doing this and doing that and all, into all type of stuff. And when mm -hmm. you be on all type of drugs, you cut them, you bumping them into mm -hmm. stuff and doing all dropping and going in. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. my hands looked it a lot different. You know what I mean? But now, life is just calm and cool. Yeah. You know what I'm Do saying? Do you believe in men living a soft life? I mean, <laughs> I like balance. I don't think you should tough it out because if you're trying to be tough all the time something's wrong with that i do agree you know what i'm saying like you're too tough dog like you know what i'm saying like i think that a little bit you know you know balance it out don't be too much of anything you know what i, I mean agree. i don't want my nigga to be soft but i do think that men should you know Enjoy the pleasures of life. Yeah. Like, they should be able to get facials and, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. and like, get manicures and get yeah. massages and go on trips and buy themselves nice th nice things and have that. They and even not have to just be for us. Yeah, and then even have they women buy them things and do nice things for them. Like, I feel like a good man deserves that type of stuff. Like, yeah. I love it. I agree. I'm my own. I got a partner named Shotty John. He really... What's up, Shotty John? Shotty John, you know what I'm saying? John, what's happening? You know, I had to keep doing, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? He teach you how to pamper Got yourself him. as a player. You feel me? You, Not pamper you, yourself as a player. As a player, you got to, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole business. That's you, another business you, you got right there. You Can want, I ask you a question real quick? Go ahead. Why do Atlanta niggas do that? What? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, have to, you know, we like gestures. Y'all all, all you know be saying? fixing y'all. Come out. You know what I'm saying? When you start talking, you got to start letting folks know, hey, look, they're one I'm kicking. They might, they're, they're the one I'm on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a work deal one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to pamper yourself. We, we steam the face and, you know, we got the steam yes. machine. We steam the face and make sure the face good. We, we sauna motherfucker. We go in the sauna, sit in there. Get now the, you talking. You know what I'm saying? I'm the, a sauna get girl. Toxins out. Yeah, get the toxins out. You feel what I'm saying? Manicure, pedicure, same time. Feet and yes. hand. You feel me? Everybody, one on their hand, one on their hand, one on their feet, one on that feet. <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? Same time. That's very expensive now. You feel it what I'm is. saying? It yeah. Is. At the same time. But it's folks. worth it. Man, Rocco taught me how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Really? Same, same time, man. It paid the same time. You know what I'm saying? But I I I I really like to to every now and then take off and now, now all the time. Right. You, you feel me? It's about balance. Yeah, so balance. balance. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Give, give yourself a chance to be musty. You know what I'm saying? Don't no. just, don't come in it now. like you know. A man has to be brute at some no. kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Because if I if I spend all my time yes. man and pay the same time, I can't fix the house. I got to fix the house on the roof. I'm gonna get mustard now. That's true. If you if I come if I come in the house smelling like rooftop grad cut garbage empty, you are gonna be like I like that stain. 
You feel me? You know what I'm saying? I like that. I like that. That bunk, kind of okay. That, that kind of look, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Now, I ain't gonna lie, a nigga who, like, if you been fixing shit, I could deal with that bunk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. But if this nigga don't be doing that thing, instinct. Yes, okay. Bro, now, you okay. tripping. Like, I, I see like, where you're going with that. Like, why you just funky? You <laughs> just stank for no reason. Funky <laughs> ass. Not you just playing PS5. <laughs> you over there and rocking. Stinky. Mm, 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 mm. Like, you got Move stinker cool. Because <laughs> <laughs> you cutting up today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, like we said, we're going to put the number at the bottom of the screen. If you have things that you want to vent about, um, we got the shot line. It's open and available. Mind you, y'all, this is not pour your heart out. This is not the advice line. This is just a vent. Get things off of your chest and let us know, you know, how you feeling, what you love about poor minds, what you hate about poor minds, or even just what you're going through in life and you just want to get it out your chest. Okay, so the shot line number is at the bottom of the screen. So now we gonna get into pour your heart out. <laughs> so Can no, I say this so? one, Go ahead. <laughs> This is why. Oh, wait, wait. We got a, point. We got a voicemail. This is we why got... I gave a disclaimer, though, earlier. I do not be drinking like that. I only had two and a half drinks, and yeah. I am tipsy. Oh, I'm tipsy. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Hey. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so we actually have a shot the line today. The old me would never. Mm, facts, because you were sober, Sally. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying the old me as far as, like, I would need, like, more than yeah. two drinks. We used to drink a... Yeah. Like All right, old, so now we me, got the... Um, the old me, y'all wouldn't be... I mean... If we stayed the old us, tough. we wouldn't be here. I was tough. I feel yeah. like you have to change for elevation. Uh, you dig what I'm saying? Look at us. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Sitting here with young Dro. Who would have thought? If you would have saw, like, our first episode, you'd be like, hell no. Nah. Them bitches get out. Nah, I would have loved it. You know, I'm from, you know, I'm from Bankhead Court. You know what I'm saying? You would have been like, you giving coochie poo. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to play the shot line. So, let's go. Hmm? Um, my name's Mimi. I'm 24. Long story short, I fuck with this 53-year-old. That's my little boo-boo. He's African. My whole family loves him. They don't know the age gap exactly, but they know he's older than me. I fuck with him, but we have our ups and downs. He fucked one of my friends. I've been secretly fucking his friend. He doesn't really know about it. Um, we agreed to be in an open relationship. Since then, things have been good, but the friend is telling me he's in love with me and falling more deeply for me and it's like I want to stop fucking with the friend but I feel I'm scared he might try to be vindictive and blow up the situation what do you guys think I should do bye y'all well first of so all far, she wasn't asking for advice she was just telling no us. yeah I know and you could tell she from New York girl he not gonna blow up your spot he not going to blow up, but your spot going to get blown up if you don't change that goddamn battery in your smoke detector, bitch. So, you going to blow yourself up, goddamn it. So you change your motherfucking battery. I, I get distracted by that shit. Why do niggas don't change that battery in the smoke detector? I didn't even detector? notice that. I heard it the whole time. Did so you like, hear that, Joe? I thought the microwave had got <laughs> notice it. I heard it. I hear it every time. Y'all niggas, change y'all fucking batteries and y'all smoke. Cause y'all gonna die. You know what we just listened to? A wild shout it said <laughs> I'm messing with Shiloh. <laughs> she said she said she messing with an African <laughs> 52 years old. And she what, 20 what? She said she said 24. 24. You messing with your daddy. Facts. But your daddy hit your friend. And you hitting his friend. And you hitting his friend. So I guess you, I guess, I know the friend probably about 60. Yeah. So you around here sleeping with old men, you might got worms, baby. I'm not going to lie to you. You doing a lie. <laughs> and nah, I'm look, not trying to, and I know she you didn't ask for a lie. Like, you baby, doing a lie. You sounded so pretty, and you is missing. Now she sound pretty. You got, you got two, it, it sounded like, and then it sounded like you was on the Zan. She sounded she like did. she was sleeping with my mother. She, she, she was in that bit lit. I think the kids on perks these perks days. 10, girl. I just popped perk. perk 30. And they perks. be on perks. perks. They I don't mean, think they be doing Zans though. But listen, Zans is still, they Zanning. Okay. Because they sleepy. I'm with 
Hey. Yeah, she sounded like she was under the cover telling that stuff. She talking about, and I just wanted everybody to know what I was doing last week and whoever, oh, <laughs> whoever was. Mm-hmm. It's getting I think real. Talking, I'm gonna have to watch. He coming in the door. He coming in the door. I cry up. It's getting spooky. <laughs> Too spooky. He coming okay. in. He coming in. Go. All right, we going to pour your Go. heart out. Pour your heart. It's so now it's time to get into our favorite segment of the show, which is pour your heart out. We be having a motherfucking time. We be having a ball today. A time, okay. It's time to get into our favorite segment, which is pour your heart out. You know, if you have any questions, you can send them to ask poor minds at gmail.com. That's A S K P O U R M I N D S at gmail.com. Send in your questions. Send in your testimonials. Mm-hmm. Period. Question number one. Hey, Drea and Lex P. I love y'all so much. Please come back to North Carolina d- during tour this year. I'll try to keep this short and sweet. Recently, I've been trying to get back out there in the dating scene after a year and a half situationship with a nigga locked up. It's been almost a year, and I just recently started getting to know a new guy for a little over a month. It seems like in the beginning of us getting to know each other, he was about to apply pressure and seemed more involved. Now, sometimes I feel like he could care less. On the podcast, Lex talked about bringing up an issue to someone, and they continue doing the same thing, resonated with my current situation. I have talked to him about communicating more, but it seems it's still an issue. He says one thing, but does another. I gained a lot of weight during the pandemic, so I'm working on my confidence and not limiting my expectations. After a situation fails, is it hard for you to trust and put yourself out there again? How do you know when your thoughts are valid versus when you are just overthinking? I don't want to give up on love, but at this point, I'm a tired 23-year-old. I'm weak that you're only 23. I thought she was about to say, like, you're still figuring Y'all. out. No, I'm not. I'm just saying we say this a lot because a lot of our listeners are young. You're still figuring yourself out. So first of all, give yourself grace. But also you have to learn, like, I hate this saying, but it's true. You do kind of teach people how to treat you. Mm-hmm. So if you're constantly telling the person, hey, you're doing this and I don't like it, and they keep constantly doing it, they really probably don't care. And I know that's a harsh truth. So I think with this situation, it's probably best to kind of cut it off. Like we talked about accountability. Until he wants to be accountable and admit and apologize, but also show changed behavior, you just kind of need to create that boundary and give it space. What you think, Draw? I'm going to give my advice after you. Um, <clears throat> I think self-love is all written all over that. Yes. Like, um, you shouldn't feel, a, a man shouldn't make you um, want to feel like you have to do certain things. Mm-hmm. He should be trying to get into whatever you have going on or trying to fit around your schedule or trying to fit in your area, trying to be around you. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, don't, don't put yourself in a position to where a nigga making you want to have to lose weight or, you know, do that because you want to do it because you're, you're, you're into yourself. You know what I'm saying? Self-love is, is very important. You know what I mean? If you do that enough, he'll see that and want to love on that. Mm, yeah. That's a good point. I just think, girl, you should live your life. I think that a lot of the time, which is something that I, I do feel like I be trying to direct people in the right direction just because I'm older and I've been through stuff. Like, I'm 31 now, so I done been 23. I done been 24. I know what it's like to be in, like, that young love mm-hmm. type of situation. But I just also still feel like you could tell somebody that's 23, like, girl, you only 23. You gonna love again. It's not the nigga for you. But people still gonna do what they want. Right. So I just feel like, girl, live your life. Do what you want. If you want to try to revisit that situation or redate that nigga, do that. But like he said, don't but, put your value on what how he feels about you. And no, yourself. yeah, don't yeah. put your value on that. But I just feel like it's easier said than done to tell people, oh, you just in young love. Because yeah. at that time, when you, you 23 feel like... and 24, you be feeling like, this is my soulmate. <laughs> I love that, this nigga. It, it sounds like that nigga much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go munch. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get to question number two. 
Hey, Lex and Drea. My name is Tia, and I'm 24 years old. I discover y'all towards the end of 2022, and y'all have become a part of my daily life. I love watching y'all so much. I'd be so shocked hearing y'all speak about haters, because what? If anything, y'all have motivated me in so many ways as a young woman out here on her own. I love everything about you, and I hope y'all know it's fans out here who see y'all. So anyway, I love finding hidden songs, music, and artists. And I made both of you a playlist that I think think y'all would vibe to and maybe we could and maybe it could be some future bops of the week i hope y'all enjoy so that was just a testimony okay. that you know that she thank fucks with us so thank you tia because you know the people be mean in the comments but we're not gonna show them love today okay so to wrap this up draw let them know where they well they can't find you because you got the flip phone but oh, let them other well, things like let us know well, like i do i let do us know what you're working I do on have, where they can find you i do have uh social media it's just rent professionally right. for you know what i mean for a lot of reasons um i do want to um attract fans that i didn't really have so in this light you know what i'm saying you still can find me one the, the, the number one Y-O-U-N-G-D-R-O -O, on all platforms. Facebook, TikTok, all that. So it's just one young dro. You dig what I'm saying? And, and this, we have, ahead. I'm sorry, we have um, me and Zaytoven in the studio. Ooh. I have I have a trilogy going on that I'm putting out. And this like the tour that I'm going on is like saving lives. Like I told you before, it's tour season, but I'm on tour to save young, young yes. kids' lives. And it's young girls, parents, and young boy so um to uh, the soundtrack to this tour is a trilogy um I, I i did a song with dietrich Haddon. he's a gospel singer yeah uh it's called run out of time and it would the trilogy is one two three but i'm starting from three and then going to two and one the next song is called guns down and it's it's a song about you know, standing up against gun violence. I'm a victim of gun violence. My mother is, so I felt that I should use the platform yes. to get off of something. It's just really stressing that, you know, we, it's all across America. We're losing a lot of kids to gun violence. Mm -hmm. So that's number two. The, the song number one is called Pain and Recovery. And it's about me, you know, in my addiction and going to the rehab and, you know, getting rid of drugs and actually telling people what that look, looks like because as a lot of us are dying from fentanyl overdoses. Yes. So, um... I'm, I want to advocate. I want to av be an advocate for that, for like people to get clean and you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna use my platform and my lyrics, my charisma to actually get through that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is a trilogy. I love that, and I love the fact that like you're sober and you show like people can still have fun because we didn't have fun today. You did, mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I feel like a lot of times people feel like they can't, like if they don't drink, they don't have fun. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're still yourself, you mm -hmm. still express yourself very well, very intelligent, mm -hmm. like. I love the fact that you can show people like you don't need all these other substances to have a good time. You don't need the libation. You don't. No, you definitely no. don't. Okay, so real quick, because we about to go to karaoke. Uh, uh you and Zaytoven got a project? Yeah, we got one, man. It's dope. Actually, it comes out. Um, I think we're gonna drop like in October, but we're doing this trilogy. We're gonna get that out first because we're on tour with it. I'll Ooh. be going to Chicago next. Then I'm gonna be stopping in LA. I'm gonna be in Memphis. It's gonna be really dope. You know what I mean? I'm but ready we're gonna be saving lives though. For that. Yeah. The people are ready. So Me too. Okay. it's time for karaoke. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Period. Let's go. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we are here to talk to y'all about GoodDaySense.com. Yes, I love me a good candle. And Good Day Sense candles smell so good. And they're soy-based candles. My fave. So there's Delicious. nothing better than getting your house super clean, mm -hmm. mopping, sweeping, all that good stuff, and lighting a candle. And let me tell you, my favorite scent is black love. I like to manifest that in the air because that's what I want. Yeah. And so... And what, it's vanilla. You, I feel like you can never go wrong with the vanilla candle. I mean, it's fall time. That's the kind of scent we need. So also, you can use code P-O-U-R, that's poor and get 25% off of your order. So go to gooddaysense.com and get your candle and use our discount code and have your house smelling good. Um, it's not always oh, the, the I got a countdown, Drea. Uh, you got you. Now we go. Oh. You ready? Oh! 
Who's out? Who's who not? Yeah. Tell me who rock, who sell out in the store. Yeah. You tell me who flop, who cop the blue drop, who drew got rock, who mostly dosy down to blue mm. socks. Same old pimp, mace. Ain't nothing changed but my limb. Yeah. Can't stop till I see my name, name on, on the blimp. blimp. Guarantee to me, sell, pull, pull a another, double up. Yeah. I'ma leave my home word, man, double up. Yeah. We don't play around, this a bed, lay it down. down. Nigga didn't know me now, you wanna bet, they know, know me, me now. now. On the young hall, nigga with the Goldie sound. Can't no kid pee, nigga hold me down. Cooler, school me to the game, now I know my duty. Stay home, stay low, no, blow no, like no. hoodie. Show True pair of niggas, spin a dog on a booty. Then you need a dego troll, dego your cutie. cutie. I don't know. And, and, and. Day one from me is like the, the more money we come up. across, the, the more problems we see. see. This is what she said. I'm coming. Wait, <laughs> um, did you kill that first verse? Yeah. Drove. I'm cleaning this bitch. We'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. <laughs>